the Malibu Historic District was nominated by describing a 15-year period following World War II. It recognizes a group of pioneering shapers and designers who reimagined a surfboard's performance and material construction, making boards lighter, stronger, faster, shorter, more maneuverable, and quicker to produce. To realize this design program, shapers access new materials, fiberglass, polyester resin, and polyurethane foam, which were being transferred out of the war effort and here locally into LA's aerospace industry. Surfers were among the first civilians to procure these materials in limited quantities. They also accessed stores of balsa wood in South Bay Navy Yards. The Malibu Historic District is the beach of Bob Simmons, shown here at Malibu, and he's the one who shaped those two boards on either side of the, the doorway behind you. It's the beach of, it's the beach of Joe Quigg, Mac Kivlin, Del Velzi, and Dave Sweet. The district recognizes surfers who combine these new boards with the perfect waves of Malibu to develop a, re a relaxed, high performance, cool style of surfing. This is the beach of Simmons, shown here at Malibu in 1947. It's the beach of surfers like Mac Kivlin, Les Williams, Ricky Grigg, and Buzzy Trent. It's also the beach of pioneering female surfers. Of, it's the beach of Vicki Flaxman, shown here surfing at Malibu in the early 1950s. Of surfers Aggie Bain, Robin Grigg, Claire Cassidy, and Daryl and Zanuck. And it's the beach of Nick Gabaldon, LA's first documented surfer of African-American descent, shown here at Malibu in the late 1940s. Gabaldon would lose his life in 1951 in Big Surf at Malibu. And the district recognizes a youthful, bohemian, energy-filled look of surfing, a look closely identified with California and then sold to the rest of the world, a look described through the stories and adventures of a bright, spirited teenage girl who traded sandwiches for surfing lessons. This is the beach of Gidget, shown here in the mid-1950s. It's the beach of Tube Steak, Moondoggy, and the Pit. Malibu, and if you'd like Gidget in particular, was the KT boundary of surfing, the asteroid in the Yucatan that changed everything after it. What came was an important, but to some, an exploitation of surfing at Malibu. This duality can be seen in the following. Longboard surfboards, the stock and trade of Malibu surfing, are known internationally as MALs. And similarly, longboard surfing, longboard based surfing clubs are Malibu clubs, such as Queensland's Noosa Malibu Club. Yet, less than, ten, or less than 10 years from the publication of Gidget and five years from the release of the eponymous film, Malibu had become somewhat of a lost Eden. From Bruce Brown and his documentary that followed two surfers around the world, every surfer dreams of finding a place as good as Malibu. By the mid-1960s, Malibu was a reference, but one of many destination sites. To accomplish this, surfers extended their surfing geography well beyond Malibu. In, well into the 1970s, they decamped from Southern California to places like Baja, Mexico, Australia's Sunshine Coast, and Hawaii's Outer Islands. Finally, early experiments in the design and production of surfboards through the design program mentioned before were refined into high volume operations with the triad of fiberglass, resin, and, and polyurethane foam becoming a surfboard's standard material construction for over 40 years.